Hello guys, um, happy new year, uh, I basically hope uh, the new year is good to you guys all. Uh, anyway, someone uh, 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 PM'd me a question uh, regarding uh, maybe solving some of the questions at the end of each chapter of the Art of Electronics uh, book. And I thought maybe uh, that's a good idea to do on this channel, so I've just decided to do as a start uh, and see uh, how it goes. But uh, I'll start uh, doing one question from chapter two of uh, uh, the book. Uh, chapter two talks about using uh, bipolar junction transistors to uh, use them in different applications. And uh, the specific questions are, there are really good. Uh, they test your understanding of the chapter uh, by uh, having you design uh, specific uh, specific <coughs> questions to uh, be solved so basically they are design uh, questions and uh, for this case I will uh, take a look at the first question so what we'll do is we'll uh, do this question together and basically show you my solution and also test it on the bench with using real parts uh, to demonstrate its operation so the first question is, uh, in fact, this chapter has, um, I think, eight questions in all involve uh, the use of bipolar junction transistors to uh, for a specific design uh, application, basically. So, <clears throat> anyway, the first question says, design a transistor switch circuit that allows you to switch two loads to ground via saturated MPN transistors. Closing switch A should cause both loads to be powered, whereas closing switch B should power only one load. And it says, uh, hint, uh, use diodes. So uh, this is uh, the application of using uh, both transistors as switches and also using diode logic uh, to implement the solution. Uh, anyway, I'll show you my solution and how I came up with it. <clears throat> so my solution is here. This is the full circuit. Okay, so here we go, Let's see if we can zoom on this, okay. So, as you can see, there's two transistor switches. Here's switch one and switch two. And they're both switching loads to ground. As you can see, to ground, when the transistor is turned on, the switch will be attached to ground because this collector will be near ground because it will be saturated. Same thing with this one. So usually NPN transistors are used for uh, switching loads to ground, whereas if you were using PMP, they will be used to switch loads to, you know, high side. So they used as a high side switch, low side switch. The NPNs here specifically are used for low side switches, and that's what the question was asking in the book. So it allows you to tell the difference between NPN and PMP in certain applications. So in this application, a PMP transistor is valid. Uh, and the type of device I'm using is BC237. And uh, you can see its data sheet and, and all that uh, good stuff. But for now, uh, this is how I implemented the solution. I have 10 volts to supply my load. And this is going to be simulate like a microcontroller input into these two transistors. So say around 5 volts. And A is going to switch this load through this transistor and as well this load this load through that path that I just showed you. <clears throat> Whereas B, the second switch, when you close it, it will switch on this load through this transistor, but it will not be able to switch this transistor because this diode is blocking it. So... For this application, A will control both loads, but B will only control this load here. Uh, in order to test this, I came up with a few values. Mm. Uh, basically, we're using these transistors as switches. So if you are using transistors as switches, you're supposed to supply enough base current to take this transistor from cutoff to saturation. Same thing with this. In order to come up with that, you need to calculate the current that goes the collector current that goes through the two transistors. For that, we just use um, our known values here. I'm using radial LEDs here, so 
1.8 drop across them when they are turned on and the saturation voltage of this transistor I'm using at 0.3 I think in the data sheet specified at 0.4 but I took at 0.3 Use normally for NPN it's around 0.2 so I'm using 0.3 instead so 10 volts minus 1.8 across this LED minus the saturation voltage divided by the current limiting resistor you get 36 milliamps of collector current so when the transistor is switched on completely which means saturated there will be 36 milliamps flowing here the same as well here 36 milliamps because it's the same arrangement now in order to saturate the transistor you need to apply a substantial amount of base current because now we are in saturation so we need to make sure that the transistor gets saturated because you don't want to waste power here because it's just acting as a switch and the, the voltage across the switch is zero so in order to do that what we need to use is we need to use a beta that's much less than its rated beta for if you were to use it in the active region so I used I looked at the transistor data sheet they specify the V sat of 0 0.4 at beta of 10 so I just took beta of 10 so I took the 36 milliamps here going divided it by a beta of 10 I get 3.6 milliamps going into the base of this transistor in order to saturate it with the specific load remember that current is gonna depend on IC and IC is gonna depend what load you attach here so if you have other loads here you have to specifically calculate the <coughs> required uh, collector current and the base current in order to saturate the transistor anyway in our case here I have 3.6 milliamps and the same thing for B now in order to come up with uh, the value for I1 to limit the current going to the base of this transistor we have, you can note that if this is 5 volts when the switch is switched on this diode will be forward biased and it will drop that 5 volts to 4.3 volts and uh, when B is closed uh, it's not gonna matter because it's directly hooked up to here so 5 volts supply but we have to make sure when A is closed uh, that it's able to saturate both transistors because there's that extra diode here so for that case 5 this drops down to 3.6 so we have two different resistors that we have to use and since uh, you can use the same resistors for both because our beta is conservative it's 10 it's much less than so you should be able if you use both the same it should be okay as well anyway so for R1 I come up with 4.7 minus 0.7 this 0.7 is this drop across VB and when the transistor is on this will be 0 0.6 to ground so 0 0.6 above ground minus 4.3 gives you divided by 3.6 of the base current required to saturate it gives you around uh, I think it's one kilo ohms but I had 1.2 kilo ohm handy on my desk here so I just use that and it's, and it's more than enough because we're using a conservative beta here same thing for R2 3.6 minus 0 0.7 divided by 3.6 you're gonna come I think about 810 or something ohms but I'm using 1.2 and again because we're using a beta of 10 so it should be more than enough the kind that the 3.6 that's going in here should be more than enough to saturate the transistors okay so that's the solution now let's demonstrate it on the circuit okay the circuit is built up here I'll quickly describe it <coughs> two transistors A and B the two switches uh, my two loads showing the two LEDs so they will show us which side is on when the switch is A, switch A is here, when I apply 5 volts here it will go through this diode, through that, turn on this guy and this guy, this way, turn on this guy and this is B, switch B and when I tap it here with a voltage with 5 volts the same thing is going to happen my source is here yeah, my source is here 10 volts for the power and 5 volts is here you can't really see it but there's an external like a second source here that's only fixed 5 volts so that comes here the 5 volts the control signal is here as you can see is and I'll tap one of these to show you which one is active and which one is not 
okay so let's do it so when we act activate a we expect both loads to be on so here we go boom so both loads on but when we activate b we only expect one load to be on so as you can see when I activate b only one load on yep so that's basically the solution to question one of chapter two uh, exercises on transistors uh, bipolar junction transistors from the art of electronics i hope you have enjoyed this video and i will try to do the other eight questions uh, as soon as i get uh, time okay perfect thank you have a good day